Hello, everyone. Um, so hopefully, I'll be able to keep you all awake after lunch. Uh, so the title of my talk is There is a Bluebird in my talk that wants to get out. It's inspired by Charles Bukowski's poem, uh, if anyone knows it. But it should actually, actually be called Programming with Birds. You can find me on Twitter at the Wizard Lucas. I mostly tweet political statements about open source, uh, but I also tweet memes, so I think it's going to be fun. Uh, and well, we all know that programming is a great experience, right? So I'm here to make it awful. Um, and I'm not the first one to do this. Don Stewart has done it before in his excellent talk called Programming with Nothing, where he basically strips down Ruby to just procs, procedures, uh, functions. I highly recommend you to do that. But I'm here to take it one step further. So this is going to be a complete wreck. First, I'm going to ruin JavaScript. Uh, I mean, JavaScript doesn't really need to be ruined, right? But uh, well, I'll do my best. Um, then I'll go even further, and I'll ruin JavaScript with birds. And then I'm going to ruin JavaScript and the birds. Um, but I'll apologize uh, in the end, so it's going to be fine. Let's start by ruining JavaScript. Let's just write JavaScript. No, just kidding. Um, so the truth here is that we're spoiled, right? We program with way too much. Who here knows JavaScript? Right, so for the ones who don't, uh, don't worry, because I'll only use functions. So that's the only piece of JavaScript you actually need to know. And this is what I'm going to bring, right? So I have this very ugly function. And I'm going to remove everything from here. And I'm just going to use functions to rewrite all that. And these are the rules. So I can only use things that are actually like allowed in Lambda Calculus. So I can only use identifiers, abstractions, which are functions, function application, and grouping parentheses, which you see a lot in this talk. Uh, you might even call this Lisp in the end. Um, well, who knows? But I'm going to do some concessions. So I'll use assignments to make this more convenient. Uh, yes, all functions will only take a single argument, obviously. And application JavaScript has parentheses. So that's it. Those are the rules, right? So let's ruin things with Lambda Calculus, right? So our first step is replace the Booleans here. Because we have some if conditions, we need to have Booleans, right? So let's replace all Booleans with functions. So why do we need Booleans anyway? So we just need Booleans to take, make choices, right? So in this ternary, what we're really doing is just choosing one of the values. So our true value is going to be a function, which takes a and b and just returns a. So it always selects the very like the first value that's to it. And false just does the opposite. So the structure looks quite a lot like a ternary, right? So the function that either returns the first or the second argument. These are true and false, right? You don't need native booleans. You can also call them first and second because you know that's what they do. They select something. So if you do, for example, true and you pass it yes and no, while true is going to return yes and false is going to return no, uh, you can actually try all these code snippets. I'll make the slides available later. I would do some live coding, but that would take a lot more than 30 minutes. Um, and you know, bim. Um, so what about the if keyword? Well, do we really need it in the first place? Because what the if keyword does is just decide between something, right? So if this, else that. So it's basically a Boolean. So we can even have some sugar and say that, in fact, the Boolean itself is our if, right? Um, so let's have some sugar. And let's have the if function as just being the identity function. And then I can have if true, yes or no, and it's going to return this, the exact same thing as if I just use my Boolean, right? So this is how we're going to replace Booleans. Yeah, my Wi-Fi works. So what can we replace right now? Well, we can already replace if, else if, and else. And we still need to replace the Boolean operators, but we're going to do that later. And in the end, I'm going to show you this function completely rewritten only with functions, right? Now we need to replace numbers. So we're not going to use any numbers as well. Um, I told you, I'm going to ruin everything. So what is a number, anyway? Like, what's the trueness of choose, right? This is true, this is true. This is true, right? But this is representation, and this is what we actually mean with it. Like, we, we're, we're trying to give a sense of repetition of quantity, right? So how can we represent quantities only using functions? Well, 
function applications. So zero, we're simply taking f and x, and we're not applying f any times. Well, here, for one, we're applying f one time. For two, we're applying f two times, and so on. So we can have every number just using function applications, right? So to go from meaning to representation, uh, I can even have a function called show, which just logs whatever specified. And I can have my unicorn, which is a beautiful emoji. Uh, well, great invention, first one, uh, 21st century. Uh, so if I do one show unicorn, I'm going to repeat the show action once with unicorn, and I'm going to get back one unicorn, right? If I use two, I'm going to get back two unicorns, right? Everyone wishes Silicon Valley was that way, um, but we can even call these uh, numbers actually once, twice, thrice, fourfold, fivefold, or whatever, because they're just repeating the same action over x, right? I can even have, like, print out numbers by increasing a counter, which is not very functional, but anyway, you get the idea, and I can get back the number, right? So if you want to try this out, I highly recommend you to do that because it's a lot easier to see the actual results. And what can we replace now? Well, we can replace A and B, which are numbers anyway. We can replace that too. We can replace everything that's crossed red, right? Now we need to replace arithmetics with functions. Uh, I'm not going to use any plus symbols, minus symbols, anything. It's just going to be functions, right? So for us to have addition, we need to have a very basic thing, which is this successor function, which when pass one, we return two. So what's the difference between one and two? It's just one function application, right? So the successor function will only apply f one more time to whatever we pass to it. So if you pass to it one, what is it going to do here? As you can see, it's going to replace n in this function. And in the end, you get one more function application to x. So there you go. This is the successor function. And addition. So what, what is really addition? It's just repeating the successor function n times. So if you want to sum 1 and 2, right? If you want to sum anything, you just need to repeat the successor operation to that number. So addition of 2 and 1 is just twice the successor of 1. And here we just replace sum. We don't need the plus uh, anymore. Like we, we won't use that. We're just going to use functions. Multiplication. Well. If numbers are actually just repetitions, for us to multiply one number by the other, we can just repeat that number, right? So we can apply one number to the other. And this is the, what the multiplication function does. So when you do the multiplication of three and two, actually you're doing twice two. So there you go, now we have multiplication. So this fn here, we can replace it if it's like a plus, if it's multiplication or whatever, right? But we still have a problem we still haven't replaced subtraction. So in order to replace subtraction, we're going to follow the very same approach we had with the plus, with the addition function. So the predecessor function is just going to take two and return one. So what is this predecessor function? Well, to explain that, I'll need to explain pairs. So this pair function, this pairing function, just takes two things, which are x and y, and then you pass it a function, which just selects between x and y. So we have selectors, right? They're true and false, first and second. So first we store true values, then we tell which one we want or whatever we want to do with them, right? So we can do this. Next slide. So we can create a pair with a and b, and then we can select the first of my pair, and then we can select the second, do whatever we want. And now, we're going to have the increment pair function, which does not really increment a pair. It basically copies the second value to the first place and increments the second one. So the so set, like incrementing that first pair, 0, 0, returns 0, 1. So 1 and 2, 2 and 3. 4 and 5, anyone? Right, easy. You're, you're pros, right? So what is twice the increment of 0, 0? It's 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. And there's a very important thing to notice here. This is that the first item in this pair is the predecessor of 3. 
right? And this is how we do, how we get the predecessor phone number. So the predecessor function just gets the first value in the pair that's resulted by running incurrent pair on 0, 0, n times. This is the predecessor function. So for subtraction, we're just going to do the predecessor of n k times. And now we have subtraction. We don't even need minus anymore. So we can cross that out. But we still have a problem here. We still need to replace Boolean operators. So we have there the triple equal sign, which is just equals equals because you know JavaScript. Um, you have greater than, which is just greater than. No tricks here. JavaScript played nice this time. Uh, so let's replace Boolean operators. So how do we replace end? So n is basically going to return true if it gets true true, right? Any other combinations are going to be false. So n is just true. It takes a and b. And then if a is true, b must be true because that's what's going to be returned, right? So true selects the first value. If a is false, it returns itself. So it's already false. And this is end. Or. So or needs to return true if any values are true. So the or function is just a and a, b. Because if a is true, it returns itself. Because you know, or just needs one true. Otherwise, it tries b. So if b is false, it's going to be false. If it's true, well, or is going to return true. Not. Well, act not just inverts any truths or false, right? So if you actually notice that it depends on the order of the arguments you pass it. You can just invert this order, and then you can have the not function, which takes a function, which is our boolean, and then it applies a and b in reverse order. So this is how we do not. So it just inverts the selector. So we still need the e0 function to be able to implement other things, right? So e0 it will return the less true if n is true, right? So if n is 0, sorry, if n is 0, it will return the less true. If it's not 0, it's going to return true false, right? Because true false is going to return a function which always returns false. Now equals. So we need to check if a equals b, because we have the triple equals in that function, as you might remember. So for us to check if something is equal on another thing, we need, just need to check if both n is minus or equal, less or equal k, and if k, and vice versa, of course, because if this condition is true, well, then they're both equal. Well, greater than is just the opposite of less equal. So we can just use not to invert that, right? And now we have Boolean operators, so we can replace triple equals, and we can replace greater than. So in our calculator machine, we can just replace everything with a function. So if is just going to be our identity function, this is just going to be eq for the triple equals, and gt, which is greater than, for the greater than, of course. And then for a plus b plus 2, we can replace that with two additions. And we can even go further and make this all uh, take a single argument, right? So this is how you write that function with functions. And now we're not using anything except functions. You can even replace the very, like, the very names of functions with the definitions themselves, so you don't have to use any identifiers. And I was even planning to show how to implement recursion using the Y Combinator, which is something you should definitely um, Google later. But that would also take more than 30 minutes uh, if I included it in this talk. This is how amazing it is. Random gifts to please the audience. Um, right, we could, as I've said, you could replace names of these functions by the definition and remove all variable names. But I'm going to save you from this pain uh, for now, because we have already had too much JavaScript. Now I need to run it with birds. So why birds? Well, birds, first I need to explain what birds are, right? So birds are just combinators, which are functions that don't have any free variables. So a bound variable is a variable that is bound to any of like, the arguments it takes. So in lambda calculus, these are called uh, meta variables. Uh, this variable takes us, takes us, you take as parameters. So in this first one, here b is taken from the context. It's not a parameter. So a is bound and b is free. 
And in the second one, we take both A and B. So both A and B are bound. Well, why birds? Like, why, are they, why do they have bird names? Oh, well, that's because of this accent book by Raymond Smullyan, which has a bunch of like combinatory puzzles. Uh, it's a very nice book if you want to just like, it's, you shouldn't just like read it from like cover to the end. Uh, you should actually try to solve the puzzles, and it's like super fun. It's something very instructive, and it's like a gateway drug to many other things in combinatory logic. So, if it's just the idiot bird which is a very aggressive name, so I, I think it's better to call it Ibis or something. Um, the Kestrel, which is all true, which just takes two things, returns the first one. The Kite, which just returns the second one, which is all false. Um, the Cardinal, so the Cardinal is not. So it basically inverts the order which you apply arguments to a function. The Vio, which is just pairing, so you get two things, you run a function on them. So the bluebird is just function and position, which is like just multiplication because you know you apply one number to the other. The thrush, which just takes a and f, and then you pass a to f, um, where it's smallest data structure, I might say. The starling, which is a lot complicated to say, but well, you actually g x, and then you apply the g to x. To f, like f to g, g dex. Um, well, you see it, it's easier to write than to actually speak. And now we're going to replace our functions with the birds. So I'm not going to replace all of them, but I'm going to replace successor and subtraction. So let's replace successor, right? So here we have f, um, we're just having n of nf and we're applying x and then f, right? So we can replace that by the bluebird, which just does function and position, and we can remove x, because we don't need that anymore. And then, here, you might see that this looks a lot like starling, right? So you can just replace it by the starling. So the successor is actually the starling of the bluebird. So this is the successor. You don't need all the crap. Addition, right? Uh, actually, it was not subtraction, it was addition. So let's replace addition. So the successor function is just the starling of the bluebird. So we are going to replace that. So we don't have to worry about it. So we still have to replace n k, right? So what we're going to do here is going to, we're going to have trush, right? So we can replace n because we're already taking the a in the trush. And then we have trush of the starling of the bluebird, and then we're applying k to it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have the cardinal of the trush so that we can take the f first. And then we're going to apply the thrush of the starling of the bluebird. And now we've just replaced addition. And you can replace everything we've done only using combinators. So now in our calculator machine, we can fill it with birds. Uh, I'm not going to do it here because I would have to replace all of it. But uh, in Haskell, you even have data aviary birds, which might help you making friends in the office if you work with with Haskell, they're going to love like burn names all over the code base. I mean, oh, so much more fun, right? So much more creative, poetic, great. Uh, they even warn you that this module is intended for illustration. I mean, um, maybe you were thinking about using it, but they warned you anyway. Yeah, nice words, right? Um, but what if I told you uh, that I'm even going to run them? Um, so I'm going to run JavaScript and the birds now. I mean, not all of them. Just the ones we don't need. So what if I told you that you only need two combinators because you can derive all the other ones with just S and K. So this is what some people call SK calculus. And people also call it SKI calculus because you know it's more convenient to have I because S and K are already very convenient. But we still need I to make it even more convenient. So I can be derived just by doing SKK. So we're just going to call it SK, right? Because we don't need convenience. So KI, which is the kite, is actually KSKK. But since we have already replaced I, I'm going to do a concession here. And I'm just going to write KI. So look how beautiful it is. Kite, KI, is KI. Amazing. The bluebird, I mean, 
do I, I'm not going to lose my time like actually doing the applications because it would just be me like doing SKS, KKS, KKKK. It would be super weird. And V, which is pairing, is this very simple thing <laughs> right here. And why not replace your whole code base by S and K today? So much better, so much more reasonable. Amazing. Easy. Uh, who's ready to replace the whole code base with S and K? Great. Um, so what does this actually mean? Well, if we, we can replace all of our JavaScript code only with functions, and then we can replace all functions with combinators, and we can replace all combinators by S and K, well, then we can replace all of our code with just S and K, right? You can do this today to your code base. And there are even sites that allow you to do this. So this first one is super cool. It allows you to write uh, lambda calculus expressions and get back S and K. So you know, if you just want to write everything in lambda calculus and you don't have to worry about converting it to SK, great resource, super practical. Uh, and this great list of, has a list of all the common areas. This is all going to be available on Speaker Deck later if you want to play. Uh, it's really fun to actually replace all uh, your functions uh, with combinators. I, would, I, I have lost like hours and hours doing this just for the sake of it. Um, but well, this is it. Uh, so I would like to apologize for having completely ruined JavaScript. I think you all agree that JavaScript has already been ruined and it was not by me anyway. Um, but I need to apologize because I do love JavaScript. Uh, and I think this is like a great way drug to many other topics related to functional programming, like uh, language design, combinatory logic, compiler theory, and also to wanting to uh, frame good up pictures to hang, to hang in your room. Um, so you're getting to this whole loophole of like amazing papers and everything. So I highly recommend you to read a bit about Lambda Calculus. There are great resources online, and it's, it's really, really easy. This is actually the most entry-level talk in this whole conference. But I hope I make, I, I've, I've been enjoyable. Uh, so thank you. You can find me on Twitter uh, at the Wizard Lucas. Uh, I unfortunately don't have my wizard hat today. At Lucas, I've cost on GitHub. Um, I've written a few things uh, about Lambda Calculus on my blog and about JavaScript. Um, you can find lots of other resources on the slide itself. So this is the blog post for the talk I mentioned in the beginning, where the guy ruins Ruby, just as I've done with JavaScript. Uh, slides for, the, for his talk, uh, list of notorious combinator, uh, flock of functions, which is an also amazing talk by Gabriel Leback, uh, To Mocha Mockingbird, which is the book I've just showed you. Uh, I've got it here with me if you want to take a look at it. Just, uh, yeah, talk to me. Uh, Understanding Computation by uh, Tom Stewart, which is a book that goes deeper into other uh, computability theory themes. Uh, and lectures by Adam Dupay in the Arizona State University. I think that's right. Yeah, I think this is it. So thank you uh, very much.